I didn't do any crime here. I'm a hard working woman doing cares for the elderly. And I'm working how much years with the with with, with the with the care in the care field. And in 2012, they came at my house and they canceled my visa. They canceled my visa. And I didn't do anything to cancel my visa. Unfortunately, I run homeless. I suffer silent. Here's I'm suffer silent. I was destroyed. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't feel like I didn't want to live anymore. Time when they take away my visa, I take 28 tablets to take my life because I was in shock. I was totally shocked, so I take 28 tablets to take my life because I think I don't want to live anymore because I don't know how to live. God, they say that I mustn't work and I mustn't do anything on the business, so I don't know how do I survive. So I think I didn't want to live again. Unfortunately, again, I lost my house. And I was suffering so much with depression. I don't know where. I was bouncing all over the place from house to houses. From house to houses. Some just closed their door on me. They don't want me no more. Friend, I was rejected. I was rejected by a friend and everyone I was rejected about. Um, I was just have depression. Incontinent problem, all kind of problem. I was bouncing around. I get raped. They rape me. Whosoever try to help me to live somewhere, they rape me. I was suffering silent. I was suffering silent. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't tell no one nothing because I didn't want they deport me and inform for me. So I'm suffering silent for years. They killed my son in Jamaica. I don't have a visa to travel to go and bury, bury him. They, no visa I have. So I didn't see my son funeral. I didn't know nothing about his funeral or how he going to bury or nothing at all because I was working but I didn't have any income. They deport my grandson. He was here from he was five year old. They deport my grandson and 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 they kill him in Jamaica. Police kill him in Jamaica. Police kill him in Jamaica. That's my grandson, Amali Francis. They kill him in Jamaica. After they kill him in Jamaica, they burn down the house. They burn down the house. So I have no house in Jamaica, I have no house in England. I'm just walking like a walking dead. Have no dignity, because if I want to use a toilet, I have to stop in the bushes, because I can't come back here to use a toilet, or I have to walk and beg food sometimes, because I don't have any money. They take away my income, they take away every benefit, they take away everything from me. I'm 64 year old, and I'm living like a, I don't know how I'm living right now. I don't know where I'm living. So I came to the shelter, and the shelter now take away for 90 days. 90 days they take us for. We have to wake up for 8 o'clock to come out. We worried about the weather, how the weather would stay. If the rain fall, out, fall we have to out for 8 o'clock. If the snow come, we have to out for 8 o'clock. So we don't know what's going to happen. We need help. We need help. We are here sitting down right now, 8 o'clock, and we, we, we don't get to start yourself out properly sometimes. We just need help. Three of us is here right now, but there is many more, you know, there is many more about the place. See this lady eating on the road. We have to come out with our food and eat it because we cannot stay no longer in there. Sometimes sometime we can't take our medication because we had a lot of medication. This young one now is have a young belly. She pregnant. She pregnant now. And we have to out. Sometimes we take medication and sleep in tablet in the night. It don't wear out out of us. So when we're walking on the road, we're walking and sleeping with the medication in us. Because the medication, sleeping the medication. I take about 10 different medication for problem what I have. I am a sick woman. 
I need a place where I can stay and relax. Diabetic is too high. So if I don't have a home to cook vegetables and cook things, how would I live? How would the diabetic go down? My pressure is too high. I have incontinent problem. I have to go to the public toilet to change the pad and to take care of myself. And it's not easy for us. So we need help. We need help. We need, we're crying out right now for help. Help, help. We want back immigration paper to salt out. We want back a nice home to live like someone. We are homeless and we cannot take this homeless condition no more. We have 90 days here and when the 90 days up, we don't know where we are going. So we need help, please help us. Help us to get benefit that we can have money to spend more than we're walking on the road and begging food. We're walking because when we leave 8 o'clock, we can't come back in the house till 6 o'clock. So all day we're on the road, traveling on the bus, traveling all over. And, and we don't know where we're headed, putting. We don't know nothing about ourselves. We are mental. All here is mental. I am mental right now with mental problem. Mental problem. And I don't know if I'm sleeping, I can walk out into a bus. I walk out into a car because my medication don't wear out of me. Eight o'clock. I need to stay in one place at ten o'clock the latest and relax. So we ask the government and whosoever in charge of the homeless to run to our rescue. We cannot take this no more. We don't want to be a suicider. So if you come and save us, you don't have to bury us. Save us and you don't have to bury us because anything can happen right now. So we need help. Help, help, help for the homeless. Help for the homeless. We are at the church right now and we need help for the homeless. Homeless, we are sick people and we cannot live this way. Medication we have to take and we have it on the road, driving from buses to buses. I work here hard and pay tax. I'm a taxpayer. And I destroy by the authorities. And I don't want to take my life. I don't want to, but I want a better life right now. Better life we need in Jesus' name.